else ready? Yep. Yep. You right there, Emma? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Hang on, I'll just um, ping myself. There we go. Right. Okay, so um, what we're going to be doing this week is, uh, well, last week I was demonstrating what we're doing this week. Um, this week I'm going to be doing what we're doing the next week because I'm kind of working uh, one week ahead. Uh, in order just to sort of stay a bit organised on my end, uh, really. But um, if you remember, I I gave everybody the task of copying some architecture, uh, and we were using flat areas of colour, and then working back over the top to add just a little bit of texture, perhaps with a bit of splattering of the toothbrush, or with... Um, adding uh, glazes of colour back over the uh, flat areas that you put down and then on some of these pictures were bits of foliage so you could do a little bit of stippling and the idea of that was perhaps to learn a little bit about blending your paint but also adding a little bit of texture on top and then learning to add shadows and things into that work as well um, and then last week what I, or last week we had a lesson um, I was copying uh, from another artist's work. So that is the next task uh, that we're doing now, is to learn a few more techniques, perhaps, from a range of different artists. So I've given you a choice of, uh, you know, artists to choose from, or paintings, uh, which you can find on our, on our web page. Um, and there's a link to that. There's also a link on the email, um, which will take you to the same uh, file um, but if you have any trouble getting onto that just let me know I think most people have managed to do that anyway um, there are two places you can get on onto that okay so I'll go over to the um, the desk and or the wall so this is the painting that I was working on uh, last week um, and the painting was ma the majority of it was in a nice blue as you can see so what I did is I created a backdrop for it first of all of just blue and the idea of this was to look at those um, highlights or the um, light areas in the picture so you can see the white coming through the curtains there the uh, very pale blue on the sill on the window sill um, and then some more perhaps in the sky and um, some in the flowers as well so the idea there was to put the blue down onto the background and then start to add in the highlights and then the shadows so the blue itself would have been a kind of uh, mid-tone um, with this particular piece what i did first of all is literally sketch the whole thing out um, so there you've got the original um, drawing of it i did it freehand um, but of course, if you want to, you can use a grid or fold your photocopy or print up and use that as a grid um, in order to get you started. OK, so once I'd drawn that out, I then applied the blue back over the top and started adding on some of the uh, shadows and things as well. So let's just um, get rid of that one. And that one and let's have a closer look at it if I can get it to move there we go all right so um, as I mentioned I applied a blue layer on the background and then started adding the highlights and here you can see it works quite it's quite effective right from the word go because you've got <laughs> it Brit the blue on the background helps to help you to see where the highlights and shadows are in this picture um, so it starts to, you know, help you visualize the whole thing and the effects of the light in this um, like kind of impressionist picture, I guess. OK, so once we've done that, as you can see at the top there, I started to add some of the darker shadows next to the highlights as well to get that effect of light and dark in there. Um, so. And then. This was a little bit later on. I've got the finished one, which I'll show you in a few minutes um, if you haven't seen it already. Uh, and then I carried on adding some of those um, details using the um, darker tones around the lighter tones, and adding some of the pinks into the flowers as well. So um, it worked, worked pretty well. 
um, actually. So that's the next task is to find a photo um, that you want to do or an art um, painting and use the similar similar techniques to the ones that I've just explained over here. All right, um, we'll come back to that in just a few minutes when we go back over to the desk. Um, but what I want to do now is show you what I've been working on next. So the next task we're going to be doing is just a little bit different. We're going to be working on uh, cardboard, but if you haven't got cardboard, paper will will do. All right. Um, so the stuff that I've got is grey board. And you'll find grey board on everything from the back of your sketchbook, uh, perhaps even on a cereal packet or something like that. This is quite thick stuff, um, but you'll be very familiar with it, especially from sketchbooks. So the reason I'm using this is because what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be creating a scratch board um, piece of uh, work. Again, working from an artist. Um, so this is where we started from. We started with the grey board. Uh, I'll just put that over there for a moment. Um, and the first thing you've got to do is um, apply some colour or add a little bit of white onto it. So this is everything that I did today. So I painted it white, let it dry with just acrylic paint uh, and then drew out uh, from the photograph that I was working from. And in this case, as you can see, it's a vase of lovely flowers sitting on a window ledge and I'll show you that in a few minutes as well so once you'd uh, made it white sketch out the drawing with your um, pencil and then the next thing to do is to start applying some paint to that so this is part way through working over with a bit of paint and again this is working from another artist's work um, <clears throat> so i've applied i've applied lots of layers of again the white and these lovely violet violety blues um, and a deep brown to add the shadows and things in there so this was looking again very closely at the techniques uh, that the artist uh, used to create this piece. Now, the next thing is uh, the scratch board thing, which you, you might find a, a, if you spend a lot of time doing this, you may find it a little bit challenging to have to paint over it, uh, which is what I'm going to ask you to do. I did the brush strokes on this piece particularly uh, loose. So I wasn't being overly precious about anything because essentially this is just a layer. This is the color underneath that I'm going to scratch through to when I do um, the scratch board um, element of this a bit later. So the next one. I'll just move that over there because I'm going to run out of room. The next bit is to then apply paint over the top of the picture that you just saw. So um, now this is where, and, and as you can see on here, there's a bottle of soap, um, hand soap. And what you need to do is put a couple of blobs of the hand soap in with your acrylic paint. This is um, like a dark blue on here that I painted over the top. You'll need to mix your acrylic paint with your um, soap. And, what that basically does is it makes the, the paint easier to scratch off a bit later. But one very, very important thing that I've just missed out is that you'll need to, before you do this stage, you will need to completely cover your board and your painting with a layer of candle wax, uh, transparent candle wax um, that um, creates kind of a barrier between your painting and the the blacky blue that I've put over the top and that way you'll be able to scratch through um, to the background um, to the colors that are underneath so you'll have this nice um, black effect on there but you'll also have these strong bold colors coming through the picture as well okay so let me just find the next one there's the next one so I'll show you the original one in a few seconds. Just want to explain the process a little bit. So um, once it's dried and it'll dry quickly because it's acrylic paint, then you can start using various 
uh, materials to scratch through your picture so let's just get in a bit closer to this so you can see the sort of textured surface where the uh, acrylic is painted over the um, candle wax um, and down here you can see where I've started to and uh, in this case I've used that plastic you see that um, rectangular black piece of plastic I've used that to scratch the surface and make these little stipples on there so you end up with these kind of interesting marks back over the top of the painting um, and it reveals obviously what you've done underneath um, and you may be thinking well this is going to be quite difficult because I can't see what's underneath but once you start scratching you, you, you get a pretty good idea of where everything is so it's quite a quite a cool technique uh, a lot of fun to do so I'll show you the original um, over on the desk now unless I've got it here hang on I think I've got it here as well no, I haven't. Um, so I've got so many things on here now I can't see anything there it is so this is the uh, the result of all of that towards the end kind of a uh, impressionist line drawing etching sort of thing here yeah, now I hadn't quite finished here but what you can do after that of course is you can get your paints and start to work back over the top with certain areas to bring out uh, some of the details that perhaps um, you missed out when you originally painted but you can see here we've got everything from cross hatching to um, stippling um, to scribbling to do all of the brush strokes for the flowers and so forth so it you know it's a really interesting and fun experimental technique and the reason I'm doing this technique in particular to this time is because when I was away in um, Harrogate I met an artist that uh, uses this technique all of the time it, her work looks nothing like this but I just thought this is a great thing for us to experiment with um, over the next few weeks. So um, I'll go over to my desk. So this is what we were doing before. Some of you may still be doing that. So remember you can do the glazes of colour over the top of the flat areas of colour. I'll just zoom in to that slightly. There you go focus there you go and um, I used don't forget I used a glaze here but you can see these little stipples and dots so that's from um, me having used a toothbrush and then over here I've used stippling uh, or scumbling as well to make this uh, foliage and then when it came to adding darker shadows I used the burnt umber mixed with um, mixed with the ultramarine which has been used on the skies and the pots and so forth okay so that's that one this is the uh, result of the painting that I did last time with you and you if you need to see or want to see anything more to do that you can see that on or if you want to see it outside of class it's on the website now uh, me doing that picture uh, but some of the nice techniques are in the um, the trees and the leaves at the top there lots of very small again sort of stipply marks to suggest the the distance between us and the and the um, the leaves there and then we've got different colors and brush strokes um, so again as I said it might not be this picture you're working on but it gives you looking at another artist's work is going to give you some nice ideas as well of what you can do with your own work I think I'm going to be working on this one next uh, just here but this was the original painting as you can see the, the one that I did is quite different to this but then we're doing something different um, altogether with the technique as well so this was the grey board just here normal grey board I paint this is a white painted one uh, another strip painted I've also put some candle wax on that one uh, and another board here's one that I prepared this afternoon um, when you're doing the etching 
or the scratching or the engraving you can uh, use a number of different tools these are just a couple of things that i i happen to have in the studio they're like these um sculpting tools which are you know uh steel ended and really nice to etch with um i used a piece of plastic um, that i found lying around in my toolbox so that's this and i'll show you what i did with it so basically i just moved it across the surface on the blunt corner to create little marks like this and the soap in the acrylic paint actually means that it's going to come off a little bit more easily i've also got this flat ended tool here so let's see what that can do and it gets some nice marks with that as well scribble with the corner you can hatch lines with a sharper end as well so you can get some really nice detail and you can actually work over the lines that you've already done to create a variety of mark making on top so it's almost like a cross between the things that we've been doing previously in class where we did the pens and a bit of painting mixed in together so this was the um the result of what i did this afternoon so it's quite a quick study but a lot of fun to play around with um and experiment with so you've got that there's the two paintings together there i'll probably work a little bit more into this but um as a study it's quite quite successful okay so um so that's what we're going to be doing um next week today um if you've chosen an artwork to work from get stuck in with drawing it out then add your layer of color underneath and uh, then obviously you can get started with um, adding the highlights and the shadows in to make it come out and look more 3d and so forth okay does anyone have any questions at this point about anything that i've uh, said so far what is the flat board is it just a cereal package or something well it could be as i said yeah it could be this is actually quite thick um uh this is quite thick gray board that i have when i package my prints and things so i just grabbed i grabbed a little bit of that but you know you could use a piece of just an ordinary piece of cardboard or like like you said a cereal packet uh, with the grey side, that is of course the unprinted side. If, if that, um, which I think you can, which I think they are like that still, aren't they? So yes, yeah, you can use that, or or even just a thick piece of card, um, um, watercolor paper or something would probably work just as well, as long as you put plenty of wax over the top. Okay. Can I just ask your um your thoughts on yeah. the color that you put over the top which is a dark blue i think you said what on top of this yeah on this one yeah to then scratch away yeah but, so but potentially you could put any color on you could put green orange yeah. whatever you like yeah so this is the color that i used here which i think was an indigo i don't, I don't know actually what it was now um but anyway i mixed a little bit of black with it um, the reason I've gone for such a dark colour is to make sure it contrasts really well with the whites and things that are in, was, were in this picture. So you've got very okay. light areas, haven't you? But then, you know, when you scratch through, you get some of these lovely um, blues come back through and things like that. So it, it's it's like a hidden painting. You're revealing it with mark making, essentially. Like so it, it's it's better to use a, a dark color than to make it more yeah I, yeah i suppose so unless of course you're i mean this is something you know that you could try out isn't it you know you could go for um a, if you had a really dark painting and you put a lighter color on top that could be quite interesting as well couldn't it um, see what i mean okay. so if you reverse that idea out and you had a painting that was particularly or a photograph or a picture or a painting that you were copying that was particularly dark you could potentially put white over the top and scratch 
the other way if you see what i mean okay. in reverse okay. um yeah or you could put patches of different colors over the top so there's lots of things uh you can do with it i would say yeah yeah right. the you. other thing i did with this as well um which i did mention was that once i'd scratched a lot of it out i wanted some of these highlights on here and some of the darker areas just to be exaggerated a little bit more so areas like this where you can see the highlight on the side of the glass the glass jar i actually painted that back in again on top to make it stand out a bit more so don't feel restricted by the technique itself you can say right i want to do a bit more there and bring this area out send that area back a bit more because as you can't actually see the picture underneath you could make quite a few errors <laughs> well yeah potentially you could but it's surprising what you can see because um on various things that i've watched it says to do two or three two two coats of this dark blue but i only did one because essentially i could see i could just about see through okay that blue with one coat so i could see this shape of the background and this area right and this bit down the side there i could see all of that just about okay. so it gave me a really good idea of where everything was going to be and then as you reveal areas it kind of all fit it, it comes together it works okay. quite nicely So I'm working here on a board which I had painted on earlier in the day. I had um, I hadn't really planned what I was painting on here, but uh, I thought um, I'll just work straight over the top of this board um, for this piece of work. So as you can see, I've I'm sketching in all the shapes uh, from each quarter of um, this piece of work. That I'm working from. So this is a painting that I found on Pinterest, which um, is I thought was quite a nice subject to work from. A little bit of a challenge as well because we've got lots of nice things on the table, such as the sculptures um, down there and a pot with a plant in it and things. So the first stage of what we're doing here is just mapping in, as I explained earlier, just mapping in the highlights. Uh, on the windows and things um, and on the tabletop and other areas around the picture so because we've got this nice blue underneath and this bit of violet um, the blue will uh, come through the white even though I'm using just straight white here titanium white uh, that blue will come through so what I end up doing a bit later on is going over the whites again uh, to make them a bit stronger and indeed I'm doing that uh, as we progress through the painting already um, and then as you can see bringing in some of the colours to the picture um, so this is a yellow ochre and a bit of yellow lemon yellow um, in here mostly um, yellow ochre um, but all the shapes are in there, so should be able to continue working on it. Um, as you can see up there in the top right hand corner, this is what um, this is the technique or the look that I'll be going for on this piece of work a little bit later as well. I think my computer slowed down at this point and then um, it may actually pause a little bit later on as well. There we go. But anyway, as you can see, I build up the darker tones and shadows on the picture as well now. Um, just looking quite quickly as I work at where the colours are, um, not worrying too much if I've got the exact colours or not. Um, but really just trying to get the feel for these shadows and so forth in the in the image that uh, we're working from here. So we've got a little fence at the background there. We've got reflections in the window panes. 
So we jumped ahead a little tiny bit there. Um, and as you can see, I'm still working into the shadows of the objects on the desktop just there as well. And most of that blue now is getting covered, but it's a nice uh, color to have underneath um, the image rather than uh, just a sort of plain white and so forth. Um, so there's a little sculpture of, of the head on there. Um, so it's nice just to see where the highlights and shadows are and just very, very loosely whack those in to try and get that sculptural form of the head. So let's not forget, of course, that I will be, um, scarily, I will be um, painting over the top of the whole thing after I've added a thick layer of candle wax. Um, so I'll be painting over the top with um, soap, hand soap, mixed with the acrylic paint and a bit of water. Um, so this helps to loosen up the paint uh, once it's dry. Um, because as you may be aware, acrylic paint is kind of a plastic uh, resiny sort of uh, paint. And it's uh, when you when you scratch back with this technique, it comes off in kind of little clumps and things like that, which um, isn't what we're after. We're after the idea of being able to scratch back finer details and work back into the image. Um, on the last one that you can see up there in the corner, I kept it kind of loose, uh, almost impressionistic, but with all these lovely mark making techniques, um, such as cross hatching and stippling up there. So as you can see, the picture is taking shape a little bit. We've got the head down there and so forth. Uh, as I said earlier, some people will find it a little bit um, scary to paint over something you've been working on. So this picture that I worked on um, this evening took me a couple of hours to do. Um, some people it's going to take a lot longer, obviously. Um, but um, if you're thinking, I can't paint over this now, I've done it, then what you could do is you could make a photocopy of it, glue it down onto some board with PVA, and then cover that in candle wax, heavy, thick layer of candle wax, and then um, paint over that with your acrylic and soap. So a nice dark color, and then you'll be able to at least try the technique out. Um, you've got to make sure everything's dry, obviously, otherwise you'll go through the paper you stick down onto the board. Um, but it is very satisfying to sort of scratch through the surface on the scratch board to the colours that you put down underneath. And, you know, expect it to look different to the original artwork that you were studying. Um, and just be try to be open minded about what the results might be. Um, and it can be a lot of fun, you know, think, right, I'm going to try out something a bit different technique wise. So on on that, which I was just showing you there, um, you can uh, do your cross hatching, you can do your stippling, you can use a range of different tools like I was uh, discussing a little bit earlier. Um, actually, the board that I uh, showed you earlier, the, the one that I was scratching into as a demonstration piece, I think um, could have had a little bit more um, soap mixed into the, um, the paint um, to make it scratch even more finely. But try different, do a little test piece if it helps, just to build up a little bit of your own confidence with doing this. Um, I have tested out this sort of technique before for my job at a school, so I'm, I've got a fairly good idea that it'll work, but um, it is worth just having some experimental bits um, before you dive in there. But I'm quite happy here with the shadows and the highlights that I managed to create in this quick painting. Um, and now the next stage will be to cover it and scratch it back. So we'll do that um, in the next session if I haven't done it already. Um, so have a good week, everyone. See you soon. Bye.